before I begin this video, I just want to say that this red cloth is not related to any religion or nor is it related to any kind of culture. It is very it has a very technical reason why I'm wearing this. It is to prevent certain things from happening so that I can um, communicate this message in a more understandable way. But I'm not gonna get into that right now. It'll get clear as I'm progressing in this video, especially at the end of the video. But for now, we're just gonna talk about why people have bad trips. People have bad trips because, and it took me a long time to understand that there's like a metaphysical aspect of it. So like the deep, the, the deep fundamental cause that is causing a bad trip. I will get to that at the end of the video because, well, it's, it's not really of that much significance to know that. It's interesting to know that, but it doesn't help like the normal ordinary people who take psychedelics. You just wanna have a good trip. That's why you click this video, right? So let's talk about that. How, how to have a good trip actually. Why are you having a bad trip? So the one reason, the only reason, there's all of the reasons that you can uh, think up that are causing a bad trip to you are fundamentally all rooted in the same thing. You have a bad trip because there's the distinction between other and yourself. So right now in your experience, there's you sitting over there in this body, or maybe you think that you're the body, and there's the rest. So you have your phone or your television or your couch, and you don't see that as yourself. You see it as other. So there are two things in the existence within your experience. There's you and there's the rest. There's I and there's you. There's me and there's that person. There's this and there's that. There's big and there's small. But all of these distinctions are is what is creating you. So to get rid of that, so that whatever happens within your experience, especially something super intense like a psychedelic experience, to merge together with that and not experiencing experience or reality as um, yourself experience reality. Uh, if you just merge together with all that you are experiencing right now and there's no such thing as myself and other so myself and the rest of reality then there's no possibility for you to have a bad trip because then whatever happens just happens there's no you anymore to mess around with it there's when when you have a bad trip there's a constant resistance between the forces that are um, constantly having impact on your body and because of the you that is sitting within this being because of your idea of a you your personality all of the memories that you had your whole uh, the whole identifying structure of your mind if that is in in high play if it is very active then it will separate things within reality and it will create a you and a that so to demonstrate this uh, suppose you're watching on a phone or on your television just see the screen that you're watching this on uh, how do you call it what do you call it like the name that uh, society taught you to call the thing that you are watching this video on is it a phone is it a television what is it a computer screen just say within your mind on what device you are watching this video you did that computer television phone whatever you are watching this video on I want you to understand that you're not watching this video on a phone or a computer or on a television you're calling it that but it is not what it is you're creating the illusion of knowing what something is because you named it so you're putting a filter over reality with your all with all sorts of fantasies and you display it on reality by calling certain things things and then uh, this completely distorts your uh, perception of reality because then you're dividing everything but that's not the ultimate truth of it the ultimate truth of the universe is that everything is just one intelligence and that there are just different forms of intelligence functioning in different parts of the universe so 
what you call as a phone is not really a phone. Look at your screen. What is that? Like really look at it. Do you know what it is? Can you really grasp what it is? You call it a phone or you call it a television screen. But is that also what it is? Is it a television? Is it a screen? You call it a screen, but do you know what it actually is? If you look deep enough, you will see that you don't know what it is. It is just raw experience. So um, you're watching this video, so you're seeing this scarf. Do you know what it is? The color, I mean. You call it red, but do you know what it is? Look at it. Do you, can you really grasp this thing that you call as red, the color? Do you know what red is? Or do you just call it red, thinking that it's actually red? Do you see that? You're naming everything in reality, but that's not what it actually is. And this is the mechanic that is also creating you. This is the mechanic that is also creating ego. Ego is not something separate from yourself. You, <laughs> there are a lot of people who say, um, uh, I wanted to be humble and I wanted to, you know, stay humble during this conversation, but my ego, he did this and my ego did that. And my ego was uh, convincing me to say this. So they're treating their ego as something separate as their self. No, ego is the thing that you are calling as a self you think that you're an entity sitting over here and that everything in reality is just over there that is an idea that is not the fundamental truth of it when you see that and you get aware of that then what happens is that um, your sense of self merges together with all of reality and there won't be such a thing left of you anymore so then the only thing that there will be there is just raw experience because that's the only thing that there is. If we would really contemplate a self, if we, if we think, um, if, we, if we would really contemplate what self is, then you will find out that there's no such findable thing that you can name as a self. There's just raw experience. Your hands, your body, the sounds that you make, the thoughts, the emotions, the colors and the shapes, all of it is just raw sensation and that's the reality of it there's no such thing that you can call as a you that's just your idea of it and you're deluded by um, your own mind because of it so to get rid of that because that's essentially what's causing a bad trip and a lot of other miserable things within people's life if you can just get rid of your own self and merge together with the rest of existence then you'll live a blessed life because when you get rid of yourself then you don't have to you, you can neglect yourself over them I want this I want that it should be like this it should be like that what about me what about I this pe this person should do like that because that satisfies my needs if you can get rid of that only if you don't even do any spiritual practice or any sort of self-development if you don't read any books, if you don't listen to any gurus, if you don't take any psychedelics, if you can just get rid of yourself by doing certain simple practices, really simple practices can, can get you there, if you're really dedicated towards it, then you'll live a blessed life and there will be no such thing as a bad trip. Uh, many people who have smoked DMT, when you smoke enough DMT, then Obviously, there won't be such a thing as you left anymore. You know, there's this, this concept that people throw around uh, in the psychedelic community saying ego death. Ego death is when you cross a certain line within your experience then in which you transcend the physical. So now right now, there's physical. If you take enough psychedelics, then there won't be such a thing as physical anymore. Then there will just be mind and there won't be a you to experience it anymore. So right now, you're in this body, pretty solid, pretty stable. 
but pretty limited. Like I can't fly, I can't grow wings or do other stuff. But in a psychedelic trip, anything is possible because then consciousness gets very flexible and uh, well, just by the, for the sake of it, anything can happen. Entities can happen, planes crashing can happen, like the sun collapsing and exploding can happen, stars colliding together and imploding, whatever, you know? Getting operated by aliens on tables, seeing machine elves, all of these things can happen because then you transcend the limited physical nature of your current reality and you get to see behind the scenes of the physical structure in which you are right now so that you see which what the universe comprises of. When you get there, when you get high enough inside your own mind that such a thing as ego death happens, ego death means I die, there's no me anymore, there's just raw experience. When you smoke enough TMT, for example, or you take some LSD, like a lot of LSD, and you get into these states of consciousness that uh, destroy your sense of self, then how you experience that without the content, you know, you can talk about aliens and machine elves and everything, you're not experiencing those experiences as a self, you're experiencing those experiences as experience. Right now, that's also happening, but you don't see it because you have an idea of a you. It's really complicated stuff, but um, fundamentally, we want to get to that state um, of, you know, smoking so much DMT that there won't be a you anymore, so that you completely merge together with the existence. I'm not saying that <laughs> there, this is going to uh, cause uh, a permanent DMT trip so that you can't even live your life anymore because you're spacing so hard. No, we just want to get rid of yourself so that there is no such thing as me and that anymore. Because when you get there, when, when you can do that, then whatever happens within your experience, you'll just gracefully experience it and let it come all over you. So then when the psychedelic happens to you, um, then it, it, it won't be able to hurt you anymore or to uh, crash into side certain blockages within you because there's no such thing as a you anymore can, that is able to influence this. If there's no you, then, and you just let raw experience and the entire existence as you know it right now, as you're experiencing right now, if you just can keep your hands off of it and just let it remain what it is without trying to change it, then you're there. Because then you realize that there's a higher intelligence constantly in function, that there are all of these forces that are comprising the existence, including your body and your mind, all of this is working together to create this experience and you don't have any influence over it. You just you are just this tiny, tiny, tiny speck in this vast universe. In this and in this vast universe, in this unlimited universe full of stars and other things, there's this tiny tiny ball. And we call it Earth. And on this tiny 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 ball, planet Earth, there's a, a country, and on this tiny tiny country inside of this vast universe there's you and what what are you like you're like you're just this piece of, of thing over there how can you be full of yourself you shouldn't be full of yourself if you think i uh, if you're having thoughts that um you're imagining situations in which you are for example talking to people uh, with full confidence that is creating ego that is creating you you want to get rid of that. That is causing so much misery beyond, uh, beyond comprehension. So, if we want to practice this, getting rid of yourself, so that there's no such thing as you anymore and you, you just let everything happen exactly as it is, then we want to practice devotion. Devotion is not going to the mosque or going to church or going to the ashram, bowing down to things, that is not devotion. Devotion is when you can just let everything be exactly as it is. Being aware that everything is an intelli intelligence that is higher than yourself and just keep your hands off of it, then you're there. If you can constantly remain in that state, then there's no such thing as a bad trip because you just let everything as it is and you're in the lap of grace 
just overwhelmed. And, you know, as a child, laying in the womb of a mother, like that, being safely held by your mother as this tiny infant, this, um, you know, baby that is not capable of protecting himself, just laying in the grace and the comfort of his mother's lap. Just like that, you also want to be laying in this existence, in this in this reality that you are experiencing right now. Because if you can do that, then constantly there's a certain mercy upon you, that there's a certain surrender, so that, you know, I'm, I'm doing it consciously right now, where you just totally relax everything, not for the sake of, okay, I'm going to relax everything right now. And then you know you, you you try to become aware of your muscles and then you still you're you're influencing things. Okay, my arm's a little bit tension, I should relax that. Okay, well um, you know there's tension over here, I should release that. No, just letting yourself be overwhelmed by the grace of existence of reality. I hope you you experiencing that with me. I hope you had a little glimpse of what it's like to not be here and to just let everything be exactly as it is because that's total. If you really, uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give like a very comprehensive practice that um, if you're really dedicated to make this happen for you, then you can practice this so that um, Eventually this can happen to this can result in a lot of ecstasy But we'll get into that later. Let's just first get into the simple practice of this So if you want to surrender yourself or your ego towards um, No, stop Ego and self is not uh, something separate when I say ego I mean self Ego is I, ego is me. So when I say ego, I'm not saying, okay, there's me and there's my ego. No, ego is yourself. So when you say ego, it is not something separate from yourself. When you say ego, that is yourself. A simple practice to, to do this is to um, get into a beautiful overwhelming experience like walking in the forest if you walk in the forest and you see all of the trees and, and the, you know the sun rays shining through the forest if you heard hear the birds chirping if you um, if you're just walking in the forest and seeing nature do its thing and you become aware of the fact that something bigger bigger than yourself is in structure over there then is keeping that reality from going then you're there that that's the only thing that is necessary to be devoted you can also do that right over here but it's harder because you know <laughs> this is my basement so or, or this is my attic so it's not really that alive so it's easier for me to dwell on myself and to create a self because there's not this intensely beautiful experience like a forest or a psychedelic experiencing happening to me so there is a very easy practice that we can do right now it only lasts for five minutes and we're gonna do it right now that uh, can give you a little glimpse of this so um, how to do it I'm gonna put up a song and you're gonna do this with your hands and you're gonna walk around in the room and I want you to bow down to to just random things that you see. If you see a couch, if you see a candle, if you see your television, if you see a curtain, if you see a window, you put your hands like this, and you bow down to it. And you try to, not by thinking about it, but just to, by observing that um, this object that you are looking upon, you don't know what it is. And there is an intelligence creating that which I don't understand. There's an intelligence constantly in function keeping this from going and you don't know what it is. You want to become aware of that. So you put your hands like this and you go to an object and you just bow down to it and you look at it with your hands like this. 
you just observe it and you realize that you don't know what it is. And when you don't know what it is and you see that and you stop calling it a yoga mat or pants, when you stop calling it things and you just observe it for what it is, then you see that um, something larger than yourself is creating that. Something beyond your capabilities and understanding. And when something larger than yourself is in function, then why can you be full of yourself? You just bow down to it because you have no idea about it, about what it is. So I'm going to put up a song and the last five minutes, only five minutes, you can do that exercise right now. I'll wait here. sit down again and look at the screen.
So if you just do that exercise, if you practice it once in the morning with the song, with the song, and once in the evening every day, then you will see that this natural bowing down to everything starts to happen. When you see a person, when you see a bird, when you see a tree, when you see the sky, and when you're doing that, you're surrendering yourself to this intelligence. So uh, now to get more to the metaphysical aspect of it, this is a very um, comprehensive thing to try to explain. When you bow down to something, there is a force which you are allowing within your system, which is then connecting you to the rest of the existence. When there's too much you within yourself going on, then this force is not able to overwhelm you. So the number one thing, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't tell you this right now because you're gonna imagine all sorts of things, but still, for those of you who, uh, who can become aware of it, it'll be valuable, so I'm just gonna say it anyway. Right now, there is a certain electromagnetical force that is keeping all of the atoms atoms that you are seeing here in function so you have neurons and you have um, neutron you have neutrons electrons and protons and these three things are circling around each other making an atom the force that is uh, making these three circle around each other is creating an atom this force you can become aware of and this is the force which you have to uh, let yourself get soaked into in order to surrender yourself to the existence so that um, the you you think you are disappears so we're gonna also try to become aware of that preferably you can sit upright with your spine erect without a backrest but if that's not possible for you then that's also fine this will just last two minutes so um, everything that you are seeing right now is basically atoms that are spinning around each other you can get aware of the electromagnetical charge that is doing that so without imagining or believing me stare at something doesn't matter what it is um, something other than this screen which we're looking upon right now just your ceiling or a wall look at that right now Put your gaze on the object which you chose to observe and just stay there for a while, just observe. Don't do anything, don't move, don't think that you should do anything, just observe one spot and keep still. see that it is not standing still. The structure of your vision has a certain vibration to it. You experience it as a certain light, a certain tingling of light that is everywhere. This light is merged with all of the things that you are seeing. It is a certain force that is present everywhere in the existence. 
become aware of the force that is moving everywhere. Not the shape itself, not the color, not the object, but the tingling of light that is happening in those objects, in those shapes, in the color. Notice that you kind of start to disappear in the object that you are staring at, becoming connected to this force that is everywhere. You may relax your gaze and look at the screen again. So fundamentally, the only thing that is causing a negative experience is that um, I hope you became aware of it, I hope that you saw it. This force that is moving all of the atoms and all of the things that comprise the existence of, that force, if you get connected to that, if you see it, then automatically then it uh, also activates itself within you it is all it is already activated within you within you but it connects the force that is um, keeping the atoms from going to the rest of your experience when you get absorbed by that if you can observe that for a long time if you can bow down to that then the you you think you are disappears and there won't be such a thing as a you left anymore it will just be raw experience and if you practice that enough by for example um, the practice that I just showed you a couple of minutes ago with the music then after some time there won't be such a thing possible as a bad trip anymore because there's no you anymore to influence the trip uh, to block the trip from happening the way it wants to happen there is a very um, comprehensive complex yet at the same time very simple practice um, that you can do to connect to that force daily and as I said uh, I think I said it earlier I don't know if I said it earlier but um, it's not very mainstream so people might think that you're weird to doing this but if you live alone and you really want to get rid of yourself for your meditations, for your spiritual practice, for your psychedelic use, for, um, you know, not wanting some things out of things. If you just want experience and life to happen the way it wants to happen and just leave your hands off of it, then if you want to uh, become available to the grace and the love of the existence just on a permanent basis then this following practice is the thing that you want to do this has changed everything for me uh, it allowed me to if you watch earlier videos then you will see that i will talk more like this and do these things and just you know expressing myself more but now i can just lay in the lap of grace just let everything you know <laughs> getting stoned and intoxicated just by letting everything happen the way it wants to happen just without touching anything playing with everything and using it but not trying to influence it or wanting it to be any other way than the way it is if you want that to happen to you then Linga Bhairavi Devi Sadhana is a practice that you can do at home or wherever you are to make yourself susceptible to this force that is always constantly trying to interact with you so that constantly you can lay in the lap of grace and just let everything happen exactly the way it is so how this practice works is um, you chant a certain chant and when you chant it and you stare at the, the, the force or just at something 
then um, you become susceptible to it and you let it in. Now, Sadhguru has consecrated a uh, major force of this inside the Isha Yoga Center in Kumbator. So how this works is what you are looking at right now is um, it is a, uh, yeah, how to explain it? It was an inanimate object, just like your table or your telephone, and it just had um, uh, the same electrical force to it uh, in most that most places have in the universe. But this place, what you are looking at right now, this has been consecrated. Consecration means you are trying to put certain information into an object so that it radiates a certain type of information or a certain type of energy. This force that we are talking about, which we, come, which we want to become susceptible to so that we can fall in the lap of grace, in the lap of mercy of the existence, it is stronger right there. It has been consecrated to uh, contain the information of that energy so that it constantly vibrates this electromagnetical field, um, but then in a very more vibrant and more intense way compared to uh, your wall or compared to your telephone or anything other that you are seeing right now. I have bought a consecrated version of it. So um, what you are looking at right now is a version of, um, it is a, a copper plate that has also been consecrated. So this force that we want to become susceptible to is stronger here uh, than it is um, on other sides and other objects. So then it becomes very, very easy to get connected with it. This force is very strong. Like um, if you have been to the Isha Yoga Center or if you have a consecrated uh, Devi, then you will have noticed that um, it just overwhelms you exactly the way as it does in the psychedelic experience. It has not been um, discovered by modern science yet that this is a possibility, but it is possible to create a psychedelic experience just by using a consecrated version of this force. So you're not taking any substances in this sadhana, you're not taking anything that is intoxicating, you're just becoming aware of the force that is constantly trying to overwhelm you and you make it a part of yourself and get connected to it. I already made a video about Linga Bhairavi and uh, how it affects your ego and your sense of self but uh, well it's been a while since that video was made and I bought a new stronger version of the same thing so it's not this small lingam that contains the energy it is now this very big very present plate that is constantly radiating this so when I'm in this room that you are seeing right now the consecrated plate the Devi she's standing over there and she's present everywhere in the room she is putting more electrical charge to uh, every atom in this room so this whole room is vibrating in a different way compared to then the room downstairs over here so that I'm constantly inside of this grace you will see that you know, if you do spiritual practice, you might recognize what uh, what I'm experiencing when I'm doing this. It's uh, if you have ever been to consecrated um, places, then you'll see that doing this and surrendering yourself and getting overwhelmed by the the ecstasy of existence becomes way easier. But as you practice this, it becomes also easier to get aware of the electromagnetic field so that constantly you can create it yourself, so that you become can become a, ling, a living lingam yourself. So that it's not limited to a consecrated space with a consecrated Devi, with a consecrated uh, item that is vibrating this energy, but so that you can become a force yourself that is constantly vibrating that energy. This results in a lot of exuberance and a lot of joy and a lot of uh, being able to express yourself with other persons. If you're making music, then your music will become so much more vibrant and so much more intense just because this electromagnetical force is making your reality much more um, intense compared to other people's reality. So to come back to the subject of this video, why are people having bad trips? You are not having a deep connection with this force 
so you're not letting the psychedelic in. Uh, many people are throwing around this um, this um, sentence. You have to surrender to the psychedelic. <laughs> well, if it would be so that simple, just surrender to the psychedelic, then no one would have a bad trip. If I just tell you, well, just surrender to the experience, then this will not result in you having a good trip and being able to go with it. It's much deeper than that. It has to be practiced. If you really want to dedicate yourself towards this path that can lead to a lot of joy, exuberance and understanding of the existence, then, well, actually the only thing that you need is devotion in your heart towards this, towards everything that you see. To be able to see everything as higher than yourself and to recognize the intelligence within everything that is much bigger than yourself so that you will be like that. If you do that constantly and not only if, you do, if you're on a psychedelic or when you're with Devi or uh, when you're in a temple or when you're in a mosque or a church, if you can constantly do that, not, by, not bowing out down to any god but just towards the experience right now, just towards everything. In yoga, in, um, we always bow down to everything, like literally everything, so that we recognize the intelligence and we become connected to truth, so that constantly we are overwhelmed and we are not disconnected from anything, so that we can prevent the, our I from happening and we can just get rid of the I and myself out of our dictionary and we can just be in union with everything. When this happens to you, if you understand what I'm talking about, not because I'm talking about it, but from your own experience, if it becomes a living reality for you, then there will be no such thing as a negative, um, as a bad trip. Because whatever happens to you in the psychedelic space, you just let it happen to you and just lay your hands off of it. So uh, maybe some of you have this question, uh, okay, then when you smoke enough DMT or you use enough LSD and you get into this experience of ego death, why can you then experience these states of consciousness as a negative experience, as a bad trip? Because, well, there's no you to experience such intense states and according to my logic, um, then you always have a good trip. Well, if there is a you right before you get the toke, right, right before you take the toke of DMT, and you mess up and you don't get connected to the force uh, around you, then that will result in the negative DMT experience. The same thing goes for LSD. Uh, to, have, to have a good DMT trip is way easier than having a good LSD trip because there's a lot more time for you to mess yourself up because the come up stage of the acid is longer before the trip starts. So you take the acid and then you know, okay, it will take like an hour or maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more before it starts to kick in. So you sit there. Maybe I should put up some music, you know, that will calm my nerves. You know, maybe I should uh, try meditating and, uh, you know, calm my nerves and just uh, become aware of Ah, no, actually, I sh maybe I should do this. Do you know the, the, the light of this room? Uh, maybe it shouldn't be orange, but it should be blue. And so uh, when there's a longer calm up stage, it'll be easier for you to mess up uh, your experience simply because the, 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 the calm up stage is longer compared to a DMT trip. If you do uh, the first if you prepare well for a DMT trip, then you know getting absorbed in that experience and just having a good experience is way easier than doing it on truffles or on shrooms or on LSD, because simply there's much less time for you to mess it up. But still, you can mess it up. It's quite easy to mess up a DMT trip for people who have no idea how it works. I think that's all I have to say in this video. For the rest, you can explore this yourself by doing the, the practice that I showed you by uh, putting up the music and bowing down to everything for five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, and you will see changes within you start to happen. And if you want to do more complex sadhana or more complex practice, then um, 
building a correction, a connection with Linga Bhairavi and watching a few videos about Sadhguru uh, talking about it, then that is also an option. I'll put a link in the description to uh, certain videos of Sadhguru where he explains more about that if you're interested. And uh, well, for the rest, thank you for watching and I will see you on your next trip.